All righty, before we get into the Trevor Wallace interview with your boy, Trevor Wallace here, a.k.a. me, Trevor Wallace, and the Trevor Wallace episode, uh, we got to give a quick shout-out to this episode sponsor, Ridge Wallet, dude. I was talking to Michael, yeah. and he said, you don't even use a wallet anymore? Buddy, I don't literally, I don't have a wallet in my pocket because I use this Ridge Wallet thick. phone. too thick. Oh my wallet! Yeah, dude, that ass too thick. It's it's too. I feel like I'm sitting on a cinder block. I don't like it. Yeah. So I use. I literally just use this. That's it. The Ridge Wallet, Ridge phone, wallet case. phone case. This is what I use. It's, I got one too. It's magical, dude. It's magical. Two cards. Because all you need is your ID and a debit card. That's, That's literally all it. you need. And you slide it in your pocket. Everything else in your wallet, get it out. Get it out. You don't. You, you're gonna go back to to Quiznos. You got seven more punches left for a free sandwich, buddy. You don't need it. You're gonna go to McDonald's and have the Monopoly things and put them. You're, you don't. You don't need Idiots. a small Monopoly. You're not gonna win a million dollars, no. okay? Exactly. You're not gonna win. So yeah, no. Because I just went uh, to uh, EDC, which we'll talk about, uh, of course. You know, and all I needed was my phone. I just had the, like you said, the license yeah. and the debit card. Amazing, dude. Beautiful. It's, whoever thought of this. Shout out to them. Ridge Wallet. Shout out to you, dude. So if you want a Ridge Wallet wallet or a Ridge Wallet phone case, go to RidgeWallet.com slash socks for 10% off your order. Get it. What up? This is episode 19. And for today's episode, I was feeling a little bit like myself, huh. you know? I was like, yeah. people need to know more about me. I feel like they, well, here's the thing, man. They all know us. You from like your videos and yeah. like your stand up, mm -hmm. but like I feel like we went into this podcast. We're what 19, 18 episodes in, yeah, just and, gun up, uh, right? And we're just like, just. Bah, gah, 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 gah. but it's like, hey man, why don't we stop and why don't you get to know who you are? You know, yeah. we want to know who you are because a lot of times these like coming in sex stories, it's like you know who they are, but you don't know who they really are. You know, it's like it would make so much more sense if you, if you get down to the root of it. So yeah, we decided like, yeah. to do like an interview episode or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, because they want to know where the cum comes from. Right. You know you what know, I mean? Where's the origin of the tree, the seed that started it all type deal, right? Because we've had a few guests on here, but it's like, we're our own guests, dog. That's what I'm saying, dude. Are we high right now? Yo. I am high. I am high as shit, dude. Uh, no, I'm not. I wish I'm not. Actually, no. <laughs> dude, I just got back from EDC, so my brain is still high. You oh, bro, what can you... What What happened? What is that? Not what is that place. like, don't dude? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Dude, honestly, the only reason <laughs> I went... Don't do the it. only reason I went is because we got like VIP passes or whatever the fuck. And Flex. Uh, well, here's the thing. All right. I... The idea of people in tank tops and, and short shorts and like bandanas and, 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 and beads and strings wrapped around their face scares me. It's terrifying. I was like, I don't want to do that. And then they're like, no, but we get to hang out at the bar on the side where all the drinks are. And I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> so we didn't have to do all like the, the sweaty, gross, moshing dance type shit where everybody's on ecstasy and just sweating out of places you didn't even know you could sweat. We just literally hung out on the side. So that part was fun. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out like, how how did these festivals like sort of start? How did the festival attire happen? Uh, Why is everyone in neon, bro? I don't know. I, I everybody looks like they're about to just go running at night. It's very confusing. It was at a racetrack in Las Vegas. Uh, it wasn't even hot. It was windy as shit. The weather was terrible. It was overall four out of ten, to be honest. Wow. Not good. <laughs> you know, mean, this this is how funny Instagram is, dude. Because when you look at your Instagram oh, story and shit, fire. You're like, yo. Yeah. I was about to drive to Vegas. I was like, fuck, dude. Yeah. Well, Trevor we, looks like having a good time. We found the loopholes, which was uh, there's the artist lounge where we could somehow get in and just drink for free. And I was like, I like this. Yeah. I, I like that part. But the festival itself is it's intimidating, dude. They just got people with their eyes that look like their eyes are doing backflips and they're just looking at you and they're just chewing on literally the air and they're just like, how's your festival, man? How's life? And I was like, I don't need to talk to you right now, bro. Yeah, I don't I'm think just, you know that you're I'm, here right now. I'm just trying to get a churro, man. That's really it. Um, <laughs> so, so you did yeah. you did a uh, you did a show there, like a stand. Like, I did do stand up on there. Yeah, yeah. Pretty how was guess. that? Because I because I text you and I was like, dude, that's got to be really hard to do stand up in front of like yeah. 25 people that think they're badgers. You yeah, previous I mean? guest Aristotle Georgian, aka Blake Weber, he Ooh. had a uh, a 1 hour show there and he invited me to do some stage time on it. So I opened up the show. I was terrified. Of course. Cuz it's just like 300 people spaced out in a tent outside that are just coming down from drugs and they're like, "We just came in here for the shade." And now this dude in short shorts is telling jokes. Uh but I just opened with talking about drugs. It's just that's what it's I the love only about thing you can talk about because dude. another comedian went up after me and ate shit because he didn't acknowledge what's going on. Dude. Yeah, you like, can't you can't go up in front of three hundred people that are LSD'd out and be like, man, Target's a weird place. It's like no, they don't 100%, even. Yeah. yeah, you throw that in four minutes in. Right, so right. So right. I, I just addressed a bunch of Molly and dumb shit like that and drugs, and then they're like, yeah, okay, all right. And then I just did my normal thing. It was actually really fun. 
Really? So, yeah. Dude, because if you think about stand-up, stand-up mm-hmm. outside, horrendous. Stand-up outside in a tent, horrendous. Stand-up outside in a tent in fucking a music festival, horrendous. Stand-up outside in a tent uh, with people outside in a music festival, um, in the, all, in drugged the, out. Drugged out and in the day. In the day. Dude, Everything was against me. Oh, Everything. my God. Everything. Couldn't have been... It, couldn't have been like a, a worse setup for me. Like, like I would have rather like perform for like thousands of people on chat roulette with their dicks out. But like, I was like, this was fine. It worked out. It worked out. It was a really fun time. Is, tra- so, is chat roulette still going on? Still, still. I went on it the other day. I was bored and it's still Fuck dicks. Fuck you. Did still you really? Dicks. Still dicks. It's just a bunch of dicks. They gave up. The admins left. There's no control there. What, what else is, ha- but like, what else could happen? Is like I don't I don't understand what so the, the what was the point the point was to like just chat with people randomly yeah I think I think so I think it was just like a interaction type thing everything turns to jerking off yeah every like literally that's you, what the world succumbs to like that's what it is off. Snapchat's now is just jerking, jerking off. off Instagram yeah. is trying to fight it but it's it's, it's, it's getting there yeah so Facebook um, is jerking off if you want to talk to your mom while jerking off yeah that's yeah, what yeah, Facebook yeah. is with now. a with a racist guy in the comment yeah exactly. right, right 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 um so that was that was dope but uh you know just five days of camping is just little you'll just feel dumb in general I uh, didn't even like do crazy drugs like all these other guys I just feel dumb you can't just be in the sun for five days and come back and be like but that against theorem you should come back and you're like. <laughs> Yeah, how do I make this peanut butter and jelly real quick? It's like, dude, I went to Jamaica one time and I, speaking of drugs, I went to Jamaica one time, spring break, and I took Ayo. so much Adderall. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know how many Adderalls I took per day. Didn't sleep for a while. Yeah. And I remember being so burnt out that my sister called me on like the sixth day I was there and she like was asking me regular questions. Just like, hey, how are you? And my brain was like, oh, I understand that question. My mouth was like, I don't know. I couldn't. She's like, are you okay? And I'm seeing like. Seeing number signs and equations so all over the I place. I was so fucked. She was like, ask me. She's like, how are you? And I was like, oh, New Balance shoes. I didn't know how to like. I didn't know how <laughs> to answer. That's what comes to your mind. <laughs> I didn't know how to answer. New Balance. <laughs> Adderall New Balance. Yeah, dude. Oh, so dude. I'm just glad to be back in, in my groove of things. Glad to be back, you know. You know what I'm glad for? What at? Look at this. Do you want to check out this smooth transition? YouTube and iTunes and, and all the podcast people? Watch this. You know what I'm happy for? Excited yes. to have? You as a guest, man. Boom! Whoa. Boom! Look at that. Thanks Back into me, it. Dude. I appreciate that, dog. Oh, man. You know what? Thanks for coming out, man. It really feels good for you to Thanks, be on man. my podcast. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's a real nice place you guys got going on here. So, uh, yeah, shout out to you guys. For I'm, I'm, it, a, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to finally get to know who you are. Because um, I don't even know who I am, you know? Wow, dude. You know? Maybe you did learn something at a festival, man. Dog, I'm I'm like, I took a whiff of somebody doing some black tar, and I was like, "What is the meaning of life?" You know. <laughs> Speaking of meaning of life, dude, what? Where, where are you from, man? Where, where is from? Trevor Wallace from? Where is he I born, born and raised, dude? In Naperville, Illinois. You just made that up. No, that's a place. You just made it up. Naperville. Yeah, watch this, dude. I was born in Mystic River, Montana. Okay, but that's a place. That's not a that's place. That's got to be a I place. I just made it Mystic up. Mystic River? I just made it up. That sounds like a Wyoming place, if anything. Not my... <laughs> uh, yeah, Naperville, Illinois. I don't, it's like an hour outside of Chicago. Uh, so that's why like, whenever like, I'll, I'll like, flex Chicago teams, even though I don't know shit about sports. Naperville, Illinois. I don't even know what it is. It's, I've, I haven't been back. It's a dumbass name. Uh, it sounds like it's just a manufactured teddy bears or some shit. Like, it's not a good Naperville. Ain't nobody throwing out a DM like, yo, who trying to get pipe in Naperville? Nobody, bro. No one, dude. Nobody in Naperville even has a penis. Well, because they know the answer is nobody. So they don't even throw it out. Yeah, exactly. So I don't even, I don't know. The Nape? Who trying to come through to the Nape? The Ville? I don't know what you call it. Napeville sounds kind of dope, though. Napeville sounds like a rapper or a tape that Nate Drog do- yeah. dropped. Napeville sounds like a place in like Nate Atlanta. Bill. Yeah. That yeah, used yeah. to be oh, a yeah. project and people always rep Napeville. N- Nape? Yeah, that's hard. Napeville. Yeah, you had the Naper. Naperville. Trash. Trash, dude. Mm-mm. Fucking trash. So that's where you were born? Yeah. That's okay, how long? Is, yeah, we, so. we'll get back there. We'll get back there. So, so that's that's where you were born? Uh-huh. Raised there? So I, so I spent like two and a half years there, you know? Okay. So we, they were, my parents were there for work, and my mom's from California, and she was like, yo, this cold weather, fuck this. And right. And so I moved down to uh, Ventura County, straight off that. So I grew up in Camarillo, California, okay. and spent, you know, up until I was 18 there. What do your parents do? So my mom is a, like a, a food writer. She does a lot of like freelance writing stuff, writes for her food magazines and stuff like that. Is that why you're flexing the fajita shirt right now? Oh, you are. The, come on now, fajita shirt, them sizzling bitches. Yo, buy them. On sale now, Lincoln bio. 
uh yeah my mom's always been a big foodie she's like done all this stuff and she's so she's always done that uh food writing and like they used to uh own a food magazine together really yeah so my mom would write for that and then like hire other people to freelance my dad would uh help with publishing and then also doing the sales for it like the the ad space oh, and then my shit. dad recently just retired but before that he was in uh the bicycle industry so he sold like diamondback and all that stuff so he was always in sales and shit and he was so he went from selling pizzas and food to selling bikes opposite like- Started oh, started with, started it. with bikes, started with bikes, and just flipped it on over to uh, just slang in that that ad space in between articles. So your mom got him into that. Your mom was like writing food shit. Yeah, she's and like, then, you still want these fire dinners? And he's like, yeah, right. My dad can't cook for shit, so it's funny. He's That's, like, he's he's your typical dad. Like, if it ain't breakfast, he's fucked. Like, <laughs> he's like, yo, I got these scrambled eggs on lock. Well, you want me to do what with the chicken breast? Nah, <laughs> I can make an omelet. Dad's crush it at breakfast. I don't know what it is, but the second you drop that nut and you got that kid in nine months, you just, something inside of you is like, I can cook a full course breakfast now. Yeah, but then after breakfast, after like 11 a.m., you go, I don't fucked. know what a kitchen is. Right, you're fucked. Why is that? I don't know, dude. That is weird, yeah. Yeah, you're fucked. Like, you're just fucked, dude. <laughs> you're like, ah, honey, what time are you home? Five? Okay, yeah, I can figure something out for that. Cereal. We could do cereal for lunch. Cereal. How, how was uh, how was the upbringing? How were your, how how did your parents like bring you up? Was it a strict house? It was kind of strict. I, I really on, on the block. So I grew up with like a lot of my like really good friends growing up. Like I lived near uh, a school, so a lot of the parents on that street had. There was a bunch of kids on that street. Right. So we all hung out together. And out of the group, my parents were like the strict one. Like when we were all outside kicking it, ain't nobody was like, we should go to Trevor's house. Right. Everybody's like, we should go to Andy's house. Or Kyle's house or Michael's house. Because Michael's house didn't give a fuck. Michael's house was like, yeah. yo, Tostitos pizza rolls for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, damn. Like, he was the, like, do you ever have the, the the friend growing up that, like, their parents always had, the, like, the real, the terrible snacks for you? Yes. That was Michael's house. It was like, yo, we got Gushers by the fucking grip. Dude, let me tell you how much I like Gushers, bro. I love them. Oh, my God. They're dude. amazing. It sort of feels like someone's coming in your mouth, but, like, who cares at that point? It's so good. If a man coming in my mouth tasted like Gushers, I'll be fine with it. Bro. What's up, man? I was going to say, dude, like, <laughs> dog. <laughs> Gushers are the greatest thing ever created, dude. I, and I don't, even, I don't even know how to describe what comes out of that when you bite down. I don't, but it's the best gel ever. Dude, it tastes like passion fruit man semen. Yes. You know what I mean? It does, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if a dude was born in a passion fruit and just like kind of just marinated in it long enough, you know, yeah. or, or he lived close to like a field of just like sex and lemons, you know, and he's just, that's where he's, Gushers, bro. I don't even, whoever invented Gushers, shout out to you. Your taste buds win a fucking Academy Award, bro. Your mom should write about Gushers, dude. Yeah. Oh, but yo, mom, remember that five star restaurant you were writing around today? Fuck that, Gushers. Dude, your mom's review of Gushers would just be sweet. That's it. <laughs> just period after sweet. She's, she's like, fruit semen. I was like, that's it? She's like, yep. <laughs> that's it. Fruit semen. Why do you think your parents were so strict, man? Because you were an asshole. They, they were like know. born into that. Uh, I, I think both of my parents had really strict parents. Right. They were very like, like my grandpa. Like, first of all, like, like my grandpa was like the world's greatest guy ever. He was, he was a veteran. Okay. He used to work for NASA. Right. NASA. NASA. And he used to eat oranges with the peel on it. Full like, peel. Like an apple? Full peel. Like an apple. Whole whole thing. I don't... Have honestly, I told you the story about no, this? No, dude. I was, in, I was in full tilt in with your grandfather until you said that. But dude, that's the manliest shit ever. And I asked him, I said, why do you eat with the peel on it? He goes, well, when I was in the war, you didn't have time to peel the orange. He said, you either peel the orange or get your face shot off. What do you want? And I was like, yo, you ever hear something so manly your dick's just like, yo, I don't need to be here anymore? Yeah. I, I was like, I'm not a man. I'm not. Yeah. That was the manliest thing I've ever heard. I got two questions. One, what did your grandfather do with a pineapple, bro? Oh, <laughs> he just. Oh. Gah, 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 gah. <laughs> bro. <laughs> <Fuck it. laughs> he used that bitch like a corn on the cob, dude. <laughs> bro, he used that thing to kill some people, bro. You just grab it by the husk and just start swinging around like it's a bat with nails in it. Oh, if you swing it fast enough, you can kill at least three to Pineapples four Charlie. Fuck somebody up. Oh, my God. I don't know what he would do with that. I'm going to be honest, dude. Orange peels are so bad that I might Terrible. get shot in the shoulder so, oh, I, yeah. so I can peel it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like, really bad. Yo, this arm don't work, but hey, fuck that peel. So uh, I think they were just like very traditional, like... Like, it'd be like if I was, like, near my grandpa and I even disrespected my mom at all, 
he wouldn't he right. would like he would just look at you and then you would feel like like he would telekinesisly beat my ass Ooh. like he wouldn't even have to hit me and i would feel like i got hit dude when you get emotionally beat oh it's worse oh it's the he would do that shit oh my god do that shit Dude, I, I I just so so many times when your dad's like, no, I'm just I'm disappointed. Oh. You're like, I would. Can you can you hit me in the face, please? I'd rather you hit me in the face. Take that back. Reverse the car into my face. Yeah. Do you have a pineapple? I'll be better. Hit me in the face with a pineapple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, please. Oh yeah. I'm disappointed. Hit me, please. <laughs> Fucking disappointed, yeah. dude. That's so true. So he was one of those guys. He was just like the smartest guy. Just shredded, buff. Worked for NASA. So like the standards were high. And uh, and your dad sold bikes. What yeah. a disappointment, bro. Yeah. Uh, no, no. no, no. <laughs> but like his dad, his dad was like another yeah. like like just traditional dude. Like right. Like he worked in a, in a heavy metal shop, and he cut off his thumb one day and just just had enough. <laughs> just had enough. Like, dude, he, dude, that's some gangster shit. Where you cut off your thumb and you just go and you just leave it on the ground and then you keep working. Oh, he, bro, I would have been like, fuck this job. I'm gonna go take this nub, put it in my chilies. Uh, at at Wendy's yeah. and try to get some money off suing them. Dude, that's a really good idea. But that's the bitch answer in me. That's like that's like the millennial. Like I could probably make a couple of mil off this. Wow. But this dude was just like, mm, don't need it. Got another one, buddy. That is literally the the most apt description of the difference between like that generation and and our generation. Oh yeah, bro. They leave it on the ground of the Ford Motor Company, they and they don't it. even they don't even tell anyone. Just kick it under the rug. Yes. Yeah. They go, hey hey Jim, why is your arm bleeding? And he goes, I don't really know. He doesn't even tell anyone. You, you pick it up and you put it in your Wendy's chili. Yes. And then they go, oh my God, there's a thumb in there. That's what you do. Millions of dollars. Wow, dude. Yeah. Wow, dude. So I, they were just like, so, but what was dope is they kind of, they, cause I don't, I wasn't on the best path in like not ninth grade. I was like smoking weed and doing shit. And I don't think I was on the best path, but my yeah. parents really eased up once I got into college. Once I got into college yeah. and they, they saw that I started like finding like what I wanted to do, like in film and stuff. They're like. He made it, right? Because they were strict because okay. they're like, he ain't going to make it. He ain't going to make it. Because they just didn't want a son to stay at home until he was 37 and just microwaved every meal. That's just what they didn't want. And just gushers. Yeah. Well, that's not too bad. Yeah, that's not great to me, dude. Yeah. Fucking dude. But uh, I think they were just nervous that I was just going to be like a, another fucking just kid that just didn't do shit with his life. So they, did they know when you were like in ninth grade, 10th grade? Did they know you were like smoking weed and stuff? They knew I was hanging out with like the wrong people and shit. And like, did they? Did they? They, they found like, like eye drops, and they found like a container that had like weed residue in it and shit. Right. But like, it was just like a bad look. So I think they were just super strict on that. And then once I like got my shit together, now we're like cool, you know, which which is dope because oh yeah, yeah. I don't even yeah, but like it was always weird growing up and having the strict parents. It's never like something to be stoked on. You know, right? Was your like, house was your house a fun house? Did you have like pool or anything, or was it nah. just like? That's it. Now, I'll, I'll, my like neighbors had the bunker. fun house. Like it right. was, it was, it was separated. It was like if I wanted to play video games, I went to this dude's house. Right. If I wanted to go to the pool, I went to that dude's house. And if I wanted the good food, I go to that dude's house. Like it was spread out, like between the three. Right. And if you wanted to be depressed, you go to your house. My house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And since my mom was always <laughs> a big chef, like as a kid, you're not impressed Ooh. by good meals. So my mom would be like, "You have to." friends come over here i was like right. mom nobody wants roasted carrots you know N zero people but now as an adult i'm like yo fam i could fuck with some roasted carrots what is that i don't know i had what something last week and i was like dude brussels i'm an adult now my whole life brussels sprouts my mom would make what? me brussels sprouts and i'm like hey mom i'd rather be an orphan yeah i'd rather be an orphan than bro, eat these they need these sprouts are the sprouts. orphans of vegetables dog but now bro i will put dude i oh I tweeted something like a year ago. I was like, why did I sleep on Brussels sprouts? These are some bad bitches. Dude, they're so good. They're so good. Dude, you cut them up, put a little bit of, put a little bit of bacon, put a little bit of lemon, salt oh. and pepper, put it in the air fryer. Everyone can go suck a dick. Dude. <laughs> they're so good. Dude, why is, I feel like when you're like becoming an adult, like you know how when you become an adult, for me at least, is when you transition from a titties to an ass guy. I feel like <laughs> when, you, when you, when you, when you, when you, do you feel that way? I feel like when you feel when you realize Brussels sprouts are good, that's when you become an adult. Because when yes. I was growing up, my whole life until I was about twenty, yeah, twenty one, yeah. twenty one, I was like, titties are the only thing that matter in life. Why does anybody need an ass? Right. And then you sleep with a chick with an ass, and you're like, fam, hey, I'm an adult. Now. Like that's an adult thing. Well, like, me, but can I ask you this? So, do you think you became an ass man just because? the social climate everyone became ass men 
Because in the day, like when our parents were alive, ass was not a thing. You never there yeah. was no there was no rap songs about hey I like big ass eat it ass. No, it never was pants. like that. They were all like, man, you got big titties. And tit like titties was the thing. Right. But now it's like I I that's the thing is like I don't know if I like ass or like or, or just Instagram made me made like, that. like that. Like it pushed me into that. No, I like ass. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm gonna try to go with you on that. But uh, <laughs> no, I I think I because for me like. As a kid, bro, like, I don't even know. Like, growing up, being a teenager and yeah. seeing titties, your mind just... Oh, I can't even handle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just explodes. Yeah. But, like, when you were younger and you saw an ass walk by, you were never like, oh, that's a fat ass. Were you? I would, like, it would go past my mind. I, would, I wouldn't... Or no, was it just not no, highlighted like I that? Was, no, then? I was never... <clears throat> I was never ass man. But here's, here's a question. Uh, do you think that when you were younger, you were more of a titty man because you were... You are used to sucking titties to get milk. Like you're closer to that age. Does that make sense? Like you, you, you idolize booze because you used to eat for them shits. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> uh, Nothing. I was just trying to think what would make me an ass man at that point. You know. Right. It's like one day I saw a reflection of myself wiping my own ass, and I was like, "Yo, damn, girl." Uh, I, dude, I don't even know. I, I, I don't even. I, I think that's like the first sign of puberty is when you see that girl. We've talked about this before. Yeah. It's like when the first girl, when you're all growing up in school and the first girl gets titties, wow. everybody loses it. But there was never really a day where it was like, yo, Jamie got ass. But let me ask you this. Don't you think now it is? Don't you think now? Because yeah, dude, that's kind of true. Yeah, because now it's like that. It's a it's it's relevant. Like yeah. big ass is like it's it's hot. Kim mm -hmm. Kardashian's ass. Everyone's talking about it. So now it's like it just it just seeped down to young kids. So now maybe fifth sixth grade. Yeah, you know what I mean. Gabriel, Gabriel, <laughs> Gabriella got a fuck guy. Just Gabe got a big ass. But. Do you, damn. But there had to be chicks when we were growing up that had fat ass, but nobody just noticed it. Well, we didn't know to fetishize it. Right. You know what I mean? Well, I guess we'll never know because I'm not going to go to a middle school and be like, my man, come here. I'm doing a survey real quick for this <laughs> podcast. You a titties or an ass guy. Um, but to, to bring it all back. Right. Speaking I felt like back. I became an adult when I realized the importance of ass. Thus, the same way with Brussels sprouts. It was like Brussels right. sprouts were around me my whole life. I hated them. Never. They were never appealing. They no. were just a green, sweaty bulb. Ugh. Just looked like a fucking Shrek just dolled up into like a ball of goo. It looked like Shrek's testicles. Yeah, not right. good, right? No. And then you just fry them, and they're that. They're what? They're amazing, dude. They're amazing. We we. What about sweet potatoes? How do you feel about sweet potatoes? Same, same thing, thing, right? Same thing, bro. Sweet potato fry. Uh, same thing. It's exact same thing. Bro, I, it's to the point where like I am blowing my own mind with vegetables now. That's when you know you're an adult. When you're like, yeah. like I had this the other day. I'm not proud to say this, but it was like cauliflower was... mashed potatoes. It was mashed what? potatoes made from cauliflower. Why wouldn't you be proud of that? Let me tell you something. Give it this to me. This shit was incredible, dude. <laughs> it was so good. I was like, yo, this is a thing. It's like that's when you're an adult is when you just realize that vegetables can be good. Yeah. And you get stoked on it. Let me ask you this, man. Have you ever had cauliflower crust pizza? I haven't. Good? Whoa. I don't know where to get some good one. Trader Joe's. They got it? Trader motherfucking Joe's. That's dude. fire. Yeah, because all you have to do is buy the crust. You get cauliflower crust and then you dec decorate it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You decorate it however Jazz you want. Jazz that bitch up. Jazz it up, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good? Oh, wow. man. Oh, it's, it's dude. It, it I want to try it, though. Oh, my God. Next question, dude. Boom. It's a little deeper. Okay. What's your biggest fear, man? Death. Really? I think about it a lot. Do you really? I used to, I used to, so I had crazy, crazy anxiety growing up and I used to just middle of the night, just wake up and just be like, what happens after this? Really? Crazy anxiety. And I, to the point where I would just wake up and I'd have to pace around or, or like at least, or like wake up my mom and dad, like as a kid and be like, just to comfort me. Was there like a, like a catalyst for this or you just like, we're just Jewish even, and just, that's what you do. <laughs> I think it's just Jewish. You just fear about shit like right. that. Yeah, You're yeah, like, yeah. what do I? What happens when I die and I still have 19 grand in my bank account? You know, it's like, wait, who wait, gets wait, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so that's always been a thing, and that's what I love about what I'm doing now. Is I'm so busy, I don't have time to think about dumb, irrational shit like that. Like, cause I used to right. just lay in bed and just wander, but now it's like I do so much in my day to day that by the time I lay down, I'm just tired. And I go to You're sleep. You're just done. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. if but if I'm just like laying there or I have crazy anxiety or some shit, right. like. That's always something that still will like scare me and some shit, but um, that's like the craziest fear for me, and I kind of just 
don't think about it now, I guess. But well, I mean, so you do you have any episodes recently? No, no, I haven't. Really? Had the last time I had a, like an episode of that shit is like I think I was, I think I had like a crazy wicked like like bender of like three days of just boozing or something right. for some shit. Yeah, and I was just laying in bed and I couldn't fall asleep and I think some anxiety just hit. And I was just like. It, it was just like a quick thought or whatever, and now I just go on my phone and drain it out. Right, it's right. It's like ah, social media, like, 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 yeah, like Twitter. Like, like, like. How, how you guys doing? Uh, I wonder what that stems from, though. Like, I, I wonder, it was way bad as a kid, but now it's like I don't even know. Yeah, I wonder. I'm just saying, like, even as a kid, like, I wonder what that stems from. Just like a, yeah. the, the just the extreme fear of the unknown. Essentially, I mean, it's got to, it's you know what I mean. Yeah. What's, I mean, what, where do you where do you lie religiously? I feel like because that one feeds into. The other, because I feel like if you're very comfortable with where you stand on your religious beliefs right. and what's the next phase, you can sort of quell that fear of like right. death because you you have an assumption of where you're going to go. Where do you stand exactly. religiously? So mom's Jewish, dad's Christian, but Word. in the Judaism world, they just be flexing. So if your mom's Jewish, you're just Jewish. Yeah, isn't that they just, funny? They just like, yo, Christians, I hear you. <laughs> But no, <laughs> they're yeah, like, yeah, Yo, that's a cute request. Mine. You want this? Yeah. Mine. Uh, so, yeah, I guess. Uh, f- so full Jewish and, and their belief is it's not reincarnation. It's heaven, right? Uh, you know, what's so funny is I'm half Jewish, too. Um, and I don't know. Reincarnation. No, it's definitely not. reincarnation. No, 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 no. That, that, that's Hindu. No, uh, uh, I think it's just heaven. Heaven or hell. And I think my mom would like comfort me with that growing up. There's some part of me that feels like Judaism. They don't believe in hell. Is that wrong? This see, this is where we would ask our producer Gabe. Yeah, uh, but also I feel you know what is weird about being Jewish. If you're Jewish and you have any tattoos, you can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery. Correct. That's wild. Well, it makes sense because that's like the first markings that you would get in a concentration camp. So I yeah. feel like they're like, "Hey, man, remember that whole time where a lot of us that died, and the first thing they did was." But put then tattoos you also on? see people with 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 Hebrew tattooed on them, and you're like. That's like double disrespect. Right, right, right. It's like right, double right, fuck right, you, right, you know? Right. So that's um, the biggest fear. And dude, I just that, cope with it by just staying busy and just not thinking about it and just doing what I want to do and chasing dreams. You so what I'm my next question is do you think that you've sort of just tamped that fear down and haven't really yeah. dealt with it? Do you I ever want to do you ever want to deal with it? Because it manifests itself because of other other things that are happening right. in your life, right? Yeah. So do you ever like think about maybe doing like therapy or anything like that? I've thought about it, but like yeah. I don't even it's weird. I think at this point now I'm like doing fine well enough off that right. that I wouldn't. But I think when you get older and you got those questions, it's like, you know, if you got therapy then do it. But I don't right, know. Right. Be, I'd be interesting to see what therapy does and, and all that. But also it's like the I don't really think about it on a day to day basis, so I feel like therapy would only make me think about it more. See, that's interesting because I did I did therapy for like two years, and it's it's a crazy experience, man. Because you have these like staunch beliefs, right? You mm-hmm. have these like things that you're like, this is why, and this is why, and this is why, and this is my identity. Then you go to therapy, and the motherfucking therapist breaks it all down, and you leave the therapist office being like, oh, cool, I don't know who I am, and they like break you down and rebuild right. you up with sort of like the. Or they hope that you're like heal and, and the, the the proper building blocks to be like a better human being, gotcha. um, but it's uh but it's but it's interesting because like you 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 just, you just leave being like oh fuck I don't know who I am uh-huh. and like that's the that's the process so I wonder like if you're just the question is I wonder if you're just tamping all that like anxiety down yeah. because you just don't want to deal with it and let's just hope it doesn't manifest itself in like another. Hey. Probably. Yeah, I don't even know. I just I think I'm at a happy place in my life now. It's just a point where That's it's beautiful. like, yeah, you know. So I don't, yeah. I don't think about it. Next one. Uh, what do What do you think uh, in, in a relationship? Right. Mm-hmm. What's a What's a deal breaker for you? What's the number one deal breaker for you in a relationship? Oh man. Yeah. yeah. See, mine is always like dumb shit, like clingy, just like stuff like that. Okay. Uh, or just not understanding like how i operate as a person i guess how do you operate as a person it's not smooth because like on my our day-to-day is very every day in a sense where like i love the flexibility to be like oh i can go do this oh i can go do that right right if like i'm like oh i gotta go film or i gotta do that or like like trying to explain to a girl like oh yeah i'm gonna go do three open mics this night she'd be like what i don't do you do you want to talk to strangers instead of me right right uh and you say yes yeah, yeah, you're like, yeah. Yes, 100%. Uh, and I will pay $5 at every one of them, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, I just think, like, cleanliness or not understanding, like, not being on the same, you know, side that I'm on career-wise. Like, yeah. not understanding shit. I think it's hard for a non-comic to understand 
um, just to understand the day to day and also like the the you you need to do things that don't make sense to to the 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 average person mm -hmm. like you're you're all you're doing is sharpening your tools you have to do mics yeah. you have to do videos you have to do this and like that's part of your job right and it's interesting because like a regular person is like oh i only work from nine to five it's like that's great yeah. for you but i work from when i wake up to when i go to sleep exactly like every right, piece right, right, right. try to explain to a regular person that hanging out at a comedy club Hanging out, it's getting work. a drink and talking to people is part of your job, dude. It's networking. Yeah, that, that's crazy. And uh, I, I think I just couldn't have anything in a relationship that like kind of slows me down to what I'm already doing. Right, so. right. I, I had that. I had the same perspective and I actually told my therapist that. And because I had this like staunch belief that if I had someone else in my life, it would like slow me down. Right. And he was like, why do you think that's like law? And I was like, well, you know. That's, that's what law. I think. So maybe... I'm in the same boat that what you used to be in. What right. they say. Right. I'm I just mean, getting free therapy advice or not. Like, yeah, yeah, what did... So what did? you should like, take out a voice so, memo. Okay, girlfriend. <laughs> right, right, right. So how do you... No, but it, that is a real thing. And and, and I think uh, it's like a... Crap. I mean, I, I sort of talked to... When Kev on stage was here, I sort of, oh, talked, yeah, I sort yeah. of got his right. feel on it. Exactly. And that's, you know, what, what he said is, is, is what I believed and he kind of reaffirmed those beliefs it's like you have to find a person who understands all of the the nuances of your job yeah. and then also takes those nuances and 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 is is they love you more because you're that motivated so when you true. go when yeah. you go i have to go to a mic she goes hmm I like that. Good. You're motivated. As I opposed like to, that. oh, so you're just going to leave in the yeah, middle yeah, yeah, of this yeah. fucking new but Netflix I'm also, show? Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to be at the point I'm at in my life now because now it makes sense. Like it, like yeah. early, like three years ago when I would have like told like all the goals I wanted to have, a girl right. would be like, right, but stay at your desk because we're watching Game of Thrones tonight afterwards right, at 530. Right. Like, but now if a girl comes into my life, she's like, oh, that's what he does on the day to day. Right. So that's like, it's a, it's a good point for somebody to see what my day to day is now. So, so now I'm finally taking girlfriend applications because beforehand I was just like, haven't made it yet. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. ladies, chill. So send it to his email yeah. address. Yeah. Uh, you know, booking, I got my manager and shit. To, so hit, hit them up if you're trying to get that fucking boyfriend, <laughs> dude, dude, trying to get them gushes in your mouth, you know, <gasps> Woo! them fucking passion fruit, bad boys. So this is an interesting question I want to ask you. Okay. Okay. Do you know what a character breakdown is? Obviously, like if you, yeah. if you, all right. So if you have a, a, for people who don't know, right? If you have an audition for acting, there's always a character breakdown for the character that you want to be. So you understand uh, more detailed what, what they want in the casting room. Okay. So Trevor, mm -hmm. if you had to give yourself a character breakdown, Ooh. what would you say? Oh yeah, it's it's, tough. Gonna, it's gonna get sad. <laughs> oh no, do we want sad, bro? Uh, this is the I, point. Every we we all want to know who you yeah, are, man. I, I, I want to like know why a, you it's, are. It's a guy who he's smart when he wants to be smart. Like he he knows what he wants in life. He knows what I'm trying to I'm trying to think. Like if I were to give this casting description, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a guy who knows what he wants in life, but he doubts how he's gonna get it in life. That doesn't make sense. Nope. No, mm -mm. no, it, hey, no, it does. No, it, no, it does. It, well, let me see. It, so, does it? Go ahead. Let me see here. Yeah, he's a, like he gives off a. Hmm. Can, can I, I? Can I try? Can I try? Yeah. To go, what would you say? Articulate it. Yeah. Are you saying that like a guy who is sees himself as confident and understands his goals, but fears his ability to accomplish those goals? Boom. Boom. Like people see him as a right. super successful dude who does blah 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 sure, blah, but sure. he's kind of like. Am I doing this right? You know, you feel, but yeah, in you his feel own like a way, he's like, oh yeah, I'm doing something right. But he, so he's just kind of like a, uh, he's a fun guy to be around, but you know, he's got his own, he's got his own world and shit inside. Right, 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 right. Which would also be uh, the hardest breakdown to ever get. If I got that, I'd be like, yo, real quick. Uh, <laughs> How do I fuck? act this? <laughs> yeah, I would just need to take that to every therapist in LA and be like, yo, uh, transcribe, please. What is this? <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> What what are what are some more qualities that you perceive I, that you ha that you have? Uh, I think it's like uh, passion. I think passion is like the biggest thing. Like once yeah. I find something I really like, that's like all I care about. Really uh, passionate and kind of like will work until that gets done. That whatever that is. Right. So it's really about passion because there's so many things that like I need to do. That's just like adult shit. Yeah. It's like I will ne I will put off doing anything adult related if it's not career related forever bro i'll, I'll right. turn in my taxes with three seconds left and then yeah. 
But anything I oh, want dude, to your, do. Oh, dude, your car right now only has three tires. Bro. It's had three tires for two months. But I can drive on three. I know. So we're good. And then when it gets to two, I'm going to put all the weight in the front, and we good. <laughs> I just made a motorcycle. Yeah, it's just a, just a passionate dude. It's always looking for something that he uh, you know, is good at or something. I like that. I like that answer. Um, what's, what's the one thing people always uh, misunderstand about you? That my me being quiet, like just when I'm by myself, is like pretty introverted. Yeah. People think that I like I give off like a like a dick vibe. Like even in the comedy scene, coming up here in, in L.A., like right. doing all the open mics, like my yeah. first year out here, people are like, oh yeah, we just thought you're kind of a dick because you wouldn't talk to anybody. I was like, no, nah, it's just in my head. Right? I was like I'm scared of all of you. What do you mean? Yeah, like, isn't it? Isn't that so funny? Because like people who are quiet, not not all the time, but generally, like uh -huh. there, there's there's a bunch of fears in interacting with everyone, and then the other people who are interacting with each other look at that person who's quiet and says, right. he's a dick. It's like no, nah, or that person's just filled with fear. Yeah. Well, also, I think if you if if uh, maybe it's just a comedy thing, but it's like if you have any somewhat of like a like you dress up or whatever, you're like you have some like fashion, or whatever, and you like style your hair, and you're just like don't talk to anybody. Like, oh, he thinks he's better than everybody. I feel like a lot of people think that when I bro, don't talk, bro. When literally, like when when I when I mention you, mm -hmm. the, when people who don't know you, they're like, ah, oh, man, I fucking hate that guy's hair. I'm like, yeah, what the f what are you talking about? Yeah. Like comedy people are so fit. Well, first of all, it's just based in extreme jealousy. Uh -huh. But it's like people are. Oh, that's the money maker right here. What's up? That's the money maker right here. This hair. Ooh. Oh, dog. Let me <laughs> let me tell you something. Do you know how many people? Because we're we're gonna get to y'all's questions too. Do you know how many people? There. So this. The, I'm just, we'll get to a fan question right now because it leads into this, right? Yeah. So Kazoo underscore Kazoo with uh four five zeros and a underscore at the end. Right? Too many. Just it's so hard to say that, right? Phone but I want to give him a shout out because he he wrote a question. <laughs> hair routine. What's the your hair, hair routine? It's the buddy? same one every morning. Give right? it to me, bro. And it involves this might be shocking to nobody a blow dryer. Yeah, blow dryer because the blow dryer gives it that height. Because I remember my barber did it one time for me, and I was yeah. like, "Yo, fam, this is a whole other element I've been missing out on." Right? Because it gives it that fucking that that. Volume. Yeah, fucking, yeah, it gives you that that hair boner, you know, a little right. erect, right? And then I just add some uh some pomade to it. And then what type of pomade, bro? Uh lay right, I think oh, it's called. Okay. It's basic barbershop shit. But people are like, where do you what Icelandic water do you use? <laughs> do you use the water from 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 Happy Gilmore and you know what what movie is that? Waterboy? Uh, Waterboy. Yeah. It's so funny. Damn, I got that EDC mine right now. I'm just hey. trying. Uh yeah, no, it is and then I just kind of style it up. And you know what the real trick is right there? Give it to me, bro. This is what I think really does it for me. Style it up. Yeah. And then in the car, yeah. when I'm driving wherever I'm going, AC real quick. The AC really? kind of hardens it. It freezes it's a it. natural, uh, what's that shit called? Hairspray. Natural hairspray. You know? Why Why that don't Why don't you use hairspray? You feel like you don't want that crunchy shit? Yeah. I don't, right. I don't know. I've never been a big hairspray guy. Because I feel like if you use a blow dryer and hairspray, then you just got to perform on Broadway. Like yeah, dude. Every, who any given moment? Like, who would use a hair dryer and and uh, uh, hairspray? Uh, dude? I mean, uh, who would do that? Uh, personal, 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 personal. Well, whoever would do that is an idiot, <clears throat> like stupid guy who performs on Broadway consistently. Broadway plays though. Okay, I've done stand up on Broadway. What did I? No, I didn't. Nah, I didn't. I, didn't. <laughs> I was close to Broadway though. Caroline's Caroline's on Broadway. I mean, it's on that's it, on Broadway. It's, right, right. It's on song. the street, though, Broadway. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's let's get some more, man. I got, I got, I got, I got some bangers here, dude. So I people in LA here. just hate my hair. It, it, that's that's the moral gist of it, you know? No, it was literally one person, and I was like, like I, I, my my response is, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> like, but that's the in, thing. In what? In what? Yeah. Literally, that's you being like, "Dog, oh, God, I hate that guy. His freaking earlobes are weird." What, what are you talking you know about? You know what's funny to me is like, if all you have to hate on is my looks, then I'm doing <laughs> something right, dude. Funny. Like when I did Kill Tony at the comedy store. Yeah. Uh, I did the roast battle and like all my jokes, like I fucking I had a great, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever roast battle. If you don't know, it's you and another comic go up one on one, -on -one and you just roast each other with jokes. Yeah. And I fucking, this girl challenged me and I just straight went in, dude. And all the judges was like Jeff Ross, Tony Hinchcliffe and a bunch of other people were just like, all they talked shit about were like, yo, jokes are great, but you just look like a fucking loser. Best, my favorite was from Alex Hooper. Shout out to him. Hair puff hoop. Uh, what did he say? He said, uh, I look like, um, Vanilla Smirnoff Ice. And I was like, <laughs> that's pretty good. I mean, so if well, all they have to hate on his looks, then I'm doing right. something right. Well, the you know? funny thing is, all of those people that you just named are disgusting looking. You oh, I mean? yeah. Like, they, they all look like smushed granola bars. Like, all of them. <laughs> 
So of course they're gonna they're gonna be uh, they're gonna it, be angry that you have like oh, luscious yeah. hair. The second the second you bring a blow dryer into comedy, people are like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> oh yeah. You're like, I built this comedy club with my bare hands. Like I fucking hate you. Buddy, first of all, we we should have a hair dryer company hit us up because both of us no. use hair dryers, okay? I so hit a, us up. Yeah, I use the most basic one ever too. It's like nineteen bucks. Oh, my shit is f- so inexpensive. Um, here we go. If you had to kill one person in your immediate family. Immediate? Who would you kill? Poof. Immediate? Immediate family, dude. I'm trying to think of my aunt listening to this podcast. Nah, right? nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not immediate though. Uh, that's not immediate. Oh, you're talking. Your mom, your dad. You have siblings, yeah? I have a sister. One sister. One sister. Older, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So sister, mom, or dad. Who would you kill? Wow. Yeah. You got to kill one person, dude. You ever seen that movie, The Lobster? Uh-uh. So essentially in the movie, in the in the lobster, the the thing is, if he doesn't kill one person in his family, everyone will die. So as soon as he kills that one person- What does that have uh, to do with the lobster? Oh, not the lobster. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's hilarious, buddy. I was like- My bad. My bad. It's called, A lobster? Uh, that the, savage? The- <laughs> it's like, no wonder we just fucking lock him up in a shark tank in the front of every yeah, Chinese restaurant. Is that what Red Lobster's all about? Um, not Red the- Lobster just gang associated. <laughs> all the bloods in there like, yo, one in, one out. They're always like this. Hey! <laughs> um, for people who weren't watching, I was doing the uh, lobster the claw. claw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, uh, it was uh, the movie was the killing of the sacred deer. Is what it was called. That's what that's what it was called. Yeah, you're a little off with the animals there. Yeah, dog. You know what I mean? It's Different. the same director, so that's why. And and Colin Farrell both star in the same one, so I wasn't too off. Really? But I yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You like the lobster? And I was like, that's a movie. <laughs> Uh, wow Stop fuck. stalling bro uh, you Quickly know You know what Here's the thing I, here's I think the thing. everyone In your family listens right Yo, yeah <laughs> Dude I would Here's the thing Here's the thing This See there's no logical answer to this And honestly Of course there's not It would Here's the thing Yeah It would have to be And this is out of All due respect here My father Cause he's lived the longest He's right. had the most experience Right and he's so proud of me and everything I've done. Wow. And I was like, Dad, I have to do this for my career. He would be wow. like, by golly, get that fucking, get that 12-gauge baby. By golly. By golly. By golly. Was he born in 1910? 12, 1912. By, by, by golly. By golly. Mr. Wallace, I'm so sorry. I can't believe your son would kill you, man. That's really, that's really fucked up. Uh, well. That's really fucked did, up. I can't believe, I can't believe you would answer that. I can't wait to wow, ask you that question, dude. bro. Wow, dude. I'm just joking. I would murder my father quickly. <laughs> I wouldn't even think about it. Who would you kill? My dad. My dad. To like, no, anybody in the world. No, 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 my dad. My dad. No, the no, entire no. universe. Yeah. You don't have to kill your dad. I kill my dead dad. Dead or alive. You can bring dad. it back alive. <laughs> you can bring back Saddam Hussein. My dad. Hitler? Saddam Hussein has a gun in your in your kitchen <laughs> pointed at you. No, my dad. Hitler or your dad? My dad, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> my dad. Um, That's so funny, dude. I think, you know what's interesting about that question? I think everyone would choose their dad. Everyone. I think it's like a it's like a man thing. Of it's course, like a passing man. of the torch. Like, I'm I'm the captain now. Yeah, I love that movie. So if somebody's like, I would no. kill my sister. I'd be like, Yo, you you really don't like your sister, do yeah. you? What did your sister do to you? That's my first question. What did your sister do to you? Right, right. Your dad could be the most loving dad in the world, but like, he's a dad. I didn't come out of my dad. My dad was a dad. I'll shoot my dad right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, uh, oh, here's one. Um, okay. Why do you think you're my single? dad? You <laughs> <laughs> said what? Why? Why do you think? Why do you think you're single? Uh, because I let a lot of relationships fall through the cracks. To be honest, okay. I think there's, how, there's but there's like people that like I could have definitely had relationships with, but I I either just lose interest or I get busy and like obviously everybody's like, well, if you care about somebody enough, you won't be yeah, busy. Yeah. It's just like ah, I just like I'm so focused on what I want to do that if like it's not the perfect perfect match, right? Then I'll just lose interest. But but all that <clears throat> all that cliche sayings of like. If you like the person, you will find time. Yeah. It's true. Right, right, right. It really is true. I just don't so, think I found like the right person for the right time in my life. Right. Dude, yeah. it's it, this is this is again cliche, but like timing is crazy everything. Definitely. And like things are cliche for a reason. Like mm-hmm. it timing is so specific, dude. So specific and so it's so real. You can meet someone that you love but doesn't just doesn't mesh with you at that moment. Right. All the time. Right, right. Yeah. So I'm I'm just oh, I'm waiting. Ladies. Dude, I'm you here. are taking resumes, huh? This, this podcast turned into monsters.com. What up? Um, if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Patience. I think so. You almost you, but, you almost ended that faster than saying your dad. 
Yeah. Patience, uh, okay. Well, actually, I think my patience is getting a lot better. I, I think my patience with other people and, like, frustration with other people, probably, uh, and just seeing things out. Because I think a lot of times, I always, like, whatever the problem is, I look at it from my point of view. But, like, I don't look at, like, if I have a problem with somebody, I don't see it in their shoes. It's always, like, this is why you are wrong. But it's, like, it's like if you're going to, like, for example. Yeah. My roommate never refills the Brita. I was like, this fucking asshole. But you know how many fucking spoons with peanut butter residue I've left on the sink? He's <laughs> right. probably walked in and be like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker with a spoon one day. So I don't see, I just want to see more sides to the story. Like, like you can't just snap on somebody and be like, okay, Mr. Perfect. And I was like, yeah, you right. You right. I did leave out a few spoons this morning. Okay, right, 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 right. It's just, yeah, it's all about just trying to be like empathetic and sympathetic to everyone's like, yeah, to everyone's situation. I would want to change that. Yes, yeah. be uh, have but a more broad point of view. It seems like you are. I feel like to Sometimes, be to though, be self aware of. Oh, you want it to be more like instinctual. Yeah, but like right. like simple shit. Like if a waiter takes forever, I'm like this bitch. But it's like who knows what's going on in the kitchen, right? You know. But like the the instinct to be like, man, fuck this. You know, it's like that's that's where I'm at. So just be like patient and understand like other people are going through shit too. Yeah, and I I, I try to do that too. Even like in traffic, when someone cuts you off, you're like you, you're immediate. You want to like, oh, I'll murder you and your whole family. Everyone oh, you ever yeah. met quickly, oh, but yeah. then you go, or that person is having a horrible day, or that person's just super late for work. And if they yeah. if they're late for work again, they're gonna get fired from Foot Locker. It's like who knows? Yeah, who knows what they're going through? Yeah, and, and that Foot Locker paycheck, man, they they need it, bro. They, well, they need, need that, that paycheck job. to buy the new spoiler. Do you believe in aliens? D- See, that's another thing is like, I just keep it so zoned into my own life yeah, yeah. that like, there's gotta be, I, I I believe in aliens, but I don't think they look like what we think they look like. What do you think they look like, man? I think everybody thinks of all these green fucking antenna things. I think that they literally look like, like, you know, the dude that's like the, Hey, you guys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy. Okay. I think they just look like deep. We all look like some form of like a. I don't even know. I think they just look like they look like if gorillas were shaved <laughs> and then hit by a garbage truck. Like I think there's just other creatures out there that they might not like they just I don't even know, bro. <laughs> Yo, I don't I don't think we can see them. No. That's what I think. You just <clears throat> in what sense? I think they have helped us along the way, mm-hmm. but I don't think we can like like I don't think we I don't think we can see them. I think they've helped us like I think there's it's a it's an it's an energy. I don't think yeah. they like walk around. I don't think you're like, oh shit, what up, Chad? Like, I don't think it's like an alien like that. You know what I mean? An alien named Chad. Yeah, who knows, dude? They're trying to like assimilate. They're like, what? what I can't have myself. a normal bro name too, huh? <laughs> what should I name myself, Chad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Um, okay. If uh, let's see, what what do I? I mean, I came up with some bangers, dude. So let's. Okay. Uh, first time you were on stage. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. How was it? Bombed. Uh, well, no, I well, I got a I got a false perception of 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 like a laughter, right? Because I did it my first time on stage. I did this thing. It was like I did this like comedy like workshop. It was like six yeah, weeks, yeah. And then at the end of it, you got to perform. So the crowd is all like recital okay. type moms. Like it was right, the same right, as if right, I was right. like a kid doing tap dancing or some shit and all the moms are just like you can't bomb honey you're great right but it's like the same reason like you ever watch like a third grade play and then they get like a standing ovation you're like that shit was trash terrible the dude. fucking trash can forgot his one line he had one line it, one it, line and it was a sound it was just like bah, bah. Exactly. Like, how do you forget and oh, he blew bah, bah. that he's over here barking like a fucking golden retriever no that's her line dumbass you're an idiot so I are think you guys I, five years old sure but fucking remember the bar I'm saying. dude I, yeah. i'm saying we live an hour away from la and you're gonna fit your fuck you're gonna <laughs> flop a line idiots uh so it was, it was all like a crowd that like wanted their kid they it, i was the only kid there but like everybody all the other comedians were like you know young adults or professionals whatever right. they they wanted they were the friends there so i did a five minute set and i did three topical jokes up front and then i did a story about going to court for not wearing a uh, a helmet ticket and talked about being the only wh- white kid in the court so i had like some sort of a point of view yeah and I blacked out on stage. Like, I don't know what the fuck oh, happened. Of course. But I remember the first laugh I got. I was like, yo. Yeah, so yeah. that was the first time I was on stage. And I was like, yo, I actually fuck with this. Because it took me like 17 years to be like, was I just decent at something? Right, 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 right. When you, the first, that was the first time I legit realized I was like, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, so did you realize when you got off stage, you were like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. Pretty much, yeah. How did you fall into stand-up? That, how did, how did, that, that moment right there. 
No, no, I'm, uh, I'm saying like, how did you even get how the did courage? that come about? Well, no, how did you get courage enough to even do the class? Like, was it oh, was it just you or like so your friends? It's actually like kind of like a, like it's like a real Disney Channel ass story. Give it to me, bro. My mom actually recommended I do it because it was like in the local paper they had an ad. It was like Ventura Ventura Harbor Comedy Club. That's like my hometown club. I'm actually gonna be there this weekend. Uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, 25th, 26th, bro. Be there Friday and Saturday, three shows. Uh, it's my home club. I love that. Oh, I just got fucking whiskey dicked on by the mic. It just flopped right <laughs> on my chest. Just dick to the chest, you know. Heard me talking about <laughs> gushing. It was like, Ugh. oh, I'm done. Uh, but yeah, so my mom cut out that ad and I was like, nah, fuck that. Because anytime your mom tells you to do something and you're under like 20, you're like, whatever you say, I don't care. You're my mom and you're wrong. Right. And then I was like, right. eh. I waited around. I was like, okay, fine, I'll go. And I remember the first class I went to, I wore like moccasins and some like dumbass like skate t-shirt. I was like an hour late and I was like, yeah, what up? I'm here for like comedy, I guess. And then the dude like had me write some <laughs> jokes and he's like, oh, you you already know the structure of some jokes. And I was like, what? <laughs> did you like, why, why did your mom recommend it? Did you just like watch stand up a bunch? I think she was just trying to get me to just do shit. Like, are like, you serious? So she, you, it wasn't like you were like invested in stand up. It wasn't like you were the class clown. No, nah, I like always, saw... always loved comedy. I was, oh, I was okay. like, uh, so I was only watched comedy movies growing up. I loved right. Robin Williams. Like I used to, like they had a Robin Williams like tape that like a DVD that I used to watch right. like at night and whatnot. So they knew I was a fan of comedy, but my mom was like, you have a good characteristics. Like you have good like energy and all that. I feel like you could, I hate your hair, but like yeah, that. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think she was just like a recommendation. I did it. And then I was like, yo, this shit fucking lit. So that was that's it. That's sick, dude. Thanks, mom. Yeah, shout out to my mom, dude. Dude, that, uh, honestly, that's like, that's beautiful, man. It is. That's why it's Disney Channel story right there. Because your parents are the the last people to be like, you know what you should do? Stand up. Right. And now you if, if people up. didn't hate me already because of my hair, now that story, Ooh, they're they like, what you. do you mean? If your dad didn't leave you by a train track <laughs> with the bandana and four skittles, why do you do stand up? Huh? You had no trauma in your life. If you're not. A meth baby is that funny then you yeah it's just like if, if you yeah exactly like if you're not like it, the more you go to like la open mics when you're coming up out here it's like the more you're like i had a great childhood i know it's like if you weren't beat at least like twice a day it's like oh i'm good but it's interesting because like everyone thinks you have to be like a torture artist to actually be like a good artist right which is just which is just wrong yeah and it's also funny because it, it, it's an interesting uh point of view and a different point of view if you didn't Right. Like, because everyone's like, oh man, I took meth when I was six and I didn't have parents and I was raised by orchids. You're like, I don't know how you were raised by flowers, but great. <laughs> um, but you're also healthy. Yeah. <laughs> but you're also like, but so coming from like a positive standpoint to be like, I didn't have a bad childhood is is almost more interesting now because it's different. Right. It's also like, if you're normal, because like, think about a crowd. The crowd was all raised normal people too. And they're like, yeah, he was abandoned at six. Yeah. Flowers? Yeah. <laughs> How is raised him? Chloroplast? It's like you can't relate to shit on that point, but uh, yeah, no, that's. I mean, listen, dude. Even if you come from a good childhood, you're fucked up. We're all fucked up. Yeah. Everyone's parents fucked up. No one knows what they're doing. No one tells anyone how to raise a kid. You just have a kid. You have Isn't sex in a Burger thing? King bathroom. Then you have a kid nine months later, and then they go good luck. And then you gotta like read a pamphlet, maybe. I think that's why it takes babies so long to talk is because you're spending so much of your life being like, fuck, I don't know what to do with him. Yeah. And the baby just can't translate it. So you get like three years of a bypass of like learning. That's your buffer. Buddy, that's why that's why your baby learns to walk because it's trying to get the fuck out of there. Yeah, yeah. but the, the, those first couple of months is just like, you could say whatever. And that baby's like, get your shit together. You, you got a fucking premium trial right now of a, of a real <laughs> life thing. Learn your shit. Dude, I always thought I want to do with my kid. <clears throat> like, make them learn like a wrong thing so it's super funny when they go to class and they think like like i want to like something small it's fucking like, evil dude i know but it's funny to me like, like one color's off yeah, that's what i'm saying i was gonna do square square is circle and circle square uh -huh. so then their entire life they think you know they're like that's a square and everyone's like fucking idiot dude that's a circle bro. <laughs> he goes up to a girl at the club's like yo you see the back of that girl man she got some thick ass squares on that <laughs> What? Yeah, bro. The, the way her ass is shaped, bro. It's got the nice, nice, <laughs> all four points to it. Bro, circle? 360 degrees of square, dude. <laughs> <laughs> got nut at all up in them square titties. Square square titties. I don't... <laughs> Yo, TVs are so cool because they're square. <laughs> Damn it, circle. I mean, um, all right. Another question from fans, dude. Um, uh, so, who does Trevor look up to on YouTube? And who does he feel challenged by? Great Ooh, question. That's good. 
Uh, who would I look up to? The OG probably is like Jimmy Tatro. That was like the first YouTuber I like watched. And I was like, oh, because I was like, I started making videos when I was in a fraternity. So I was very about right. that bro right. kind of comedy. And that dude just like, he nailed it to a T. And he was like, I was like, I just want to like work with him or do something like that. Right. So him. Uh, and then this dude, Brandon Rogers, who who's like, he's been around for a while, but his like style is like everything I love. Like how a lot of how like my style is shot. Who do, who do I fear? Probably the people around me, but I like that. All the people I hang out with equally have, you know, the same content or probably better. And it's like, oh, fuck. So-and-so just dropped that. Like my buddy, Steve Emerson, like he, like for a, a one minute Instagram sketch, he's re he'll reshoot it like five times. He'll get a sound right. right. Like he's touching up the color and this and that. And I'm like, yo, I fucking made this on my phone. Like <laughs> that's art, you know? So right. people like that. It's like, I, I like being surrounded with like people that do better, better, you know, stuff than me because it challenges me to make better shit yeah that's beautiful man um another fan question <clears throat> um uh i don't really know how to say this this instagram handle's name it says tb underscore eyes a u h sorry if i'm messing it up uh, but they want to ask uh weirdest slash freakiest sexual experience hmm. the weirdest sexual experience dude uh I don't even think here. I don't even like. We're talking about threesomes. We're talking about. Did you ever like it, have sex on top of like an Arby's burger? Dude, I never really had crazy stuff like that. Ever have sex in like the back of a Volkswagen Beetle? Nah, I, I never really. Have you had sex? Nah, that's uh, a question. I think. <laughs> I think. Like I think people. that's why I can't answer that right now. I was like. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> yo, there was literally 10 people on the Stiff Socks Instagram that was like, yo, is he a virgin, bro? <laughs> really? Yeah, there, I mean, yeah, there was probably honestly like 10. Damn. You know that question earlier, like, why do you think I'm single? Because I'm a virgin, bro. <laughs> I'm saving this shit for fucking my marriage, but I can't have marriage if I'm not in a relationship. So I'm straight up virgin to the fucking ground, but dude. Real talk, though, I think you're a passionate lover. I really think I feel Bro, like I want to be wiped up, ladies. That's what I'm saying, dude. That's what I'm saying. I feel like people like people like see Instagram like stars or whatever, and they think that like for some odd reason they think they're like, oh, this dude likes to get fisted on Wednesdays. It's like what? what? Yeah, dude. You, you that's what? what I think, dude. That's what everyone that thinks. Dude. Never came across my mind while nah, scrolling through the timeline. You're lying, dude. You're lying. Okay, once, and it was just while I was looking at the rocks page. But I feel like there, there's some people, <laughs> not. Nah, but you know what I mean. But but I think but I think you are. I think you're a good dude at heart. Yeah. And I think you want to be wifed up. And I think uh, and I think that you're a passionate lover, dude. That's pre that's my character breakdown. Are you a passionate lover? Can you answer me? Uh, are we talking in life or just in bed? In bed. I'm a nervous lover. <laughs> there, there we go. I just <laughs> I, every time I have sex, not that I ever have. <laughs> It's just, bro, it's just, it's just in my mind. Okay, you got this. Focus, focus. Don't nut, don't nut, don't nut, don't nut. <laughs> That's all my, I don't know about passionate. Like, you don't know what's passionate thing I've ever done is? Uh -huh. In college, I dated this girl and we both love John Mayer. Okay. And like, oh no. One, here's the thing. One oh night, no, this, dude. Okay. What did you do, bro? <laughs> one night we both got drunk and it's like, what's your sexual fantasy? Blah, 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 blah. I think I was drunk. I was like, yo, I want to fuck while John Mayer is playing acoustics in the other room. <laughs> I said that, right? So one <laughs> hold on, night. Hold on. Like real, like actually John Mayer? The John Mayer. Like live. Jonathan Mayer. But why is he in the other room? He can't be. John Mayer. He can't be sitting in the corner? Because what if he's just looking at my dick singing, your body is a Because <laughs> I'm like, my body's not a wonderland. John, you can see it, bro. My body's a wasteland, fam. Buddy, I would never want John Mayer in the room when I'm fucking because the girl would be like, I don't want to have sex with you anymore, Michael. Where's John Mayer? It's like... <laughs> That's John Merritt. He's hot and he's got a guitar. Why am I fucking you? Yeah, there's no, there's a reason. And, <laughs> and she said to me, I go, yes, of course, please leave me. If you if you choose me over John Mayer, there's something wrong with you, bitch. Yeah. There's something wrong with you. You out here looking like wrong Mayer, dude. You're the raw fucking dude. <laughs> uh, that was a fantasy. So one time, one time. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this though. is, this is, here, here's the thing. This is when it gets real college corny. You know what I'm talking about? In college, yes. when you like, like remember taking girls on dates in college, you're like, yo, I'm gonna take her. They'd be like, what are you doing back? So we're going to go mini putt and then I'm going to take a yard house. And then the boys are like, yo, yo that's yo. fucking, you got that yard house type money? Oh, dude. All I didn't know dates in college were corny Of course. Fuck. They're like, oh, I didn't know you had a girlfriend, bro. <laughs> right. Yeah. Bro, you got a girl. No, it's not even like that, bro. I mean, yo, a little bit. At so first, everything... dude, I'm going to take you to Dave and Buster's. You're right. Every day in college is corny. 
Ain't nobody going on like romantic dates. Because no one knows what they're doing, dude. You you go to a pond and you're like, oh, you, <laughs> you propose to her? Shit. <laughs> you're like, yo, I got her some Panda Express. Did you use your meal meal card for a free meal? <laughs> yeah, you already fucking know though, dog. <laughs> Buddy, that's, would... that's your mom's money. <laughs> yeah, but that's double orange chicken, dog. <laughs> I would go to Panda Express, take my own hair out, put it in and be like, bro, for free, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had $25 left on my student union card, so I bought our small t-shirt so my titties look good. <laughs> So what I did, <laughs> we can't we can't get to the story. Go. So what I did go. is, uh, I think we we're hooking up one night, and then she just on her phone just put on John Mayer Pandora, and oh. just like iPhone six at best. So you at were barely most. hearing that. You barely. Yeah. One speaker. Yeah. Big room, and it's just laying there, and just straight banging to John Mayer on Pandora, and I was like, this is the most romantic, but also the saddest thing I've ever done. And it wasn't, it, you definitely did not. You don't know why it's sad? Give it to me. It was the free version of Pandora. That's what I was just going to say. You'd be fucking to be, oh, 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 O'Reilly. Mom, baby, back, baby, back, baby, back, know, baby, back, chilies. I just baby start fucking back, even baby. harder for the yeah. chilies. Like, yo, bring it on home for the baby back ribs. <laughs> So, so maybe she's born with it. Maybe, oh, oh. maybe it's Maybelline. Did you just come on Maybelline? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you heard the voice. I'm that's sorry. that's an angel right there. Listen, what question was that? The freakiest thing I've done. Yeah, so that's not the freakiest thing I've done, but that might be the most quote unquote romantic thing I've done. Wouldn't that be so funny if that was the freakiest thing you did? I'm pretty freaky. I, you know I'm what trying mean? to think of some freaky shit. There's I'm gotta like, be I some freaky fu- shit. I fucked three girls on a Ferris wheel in London. That's the freakiest thing. You're like, one time I had sex with a girl and John Mayer was playing her iPhone 6. So, freaky. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any cool stories like that. It was like, yeah, I got jerked off in, in the middle of a PowerPoint presentation. Like, what? And that's why the podium's there. Uh, if you could tell your 15-year-old self one thing, what would it be? Nothing. I- I'm happy where I'm at right now. So no, what, no, no. What what would you tell your 15-year-old self? Still nothing? I, you didn't learn anything from fucking 15 and now? Nah, here's what I would say. <laughs> here's what I would say. I don't... Dude, I don't know. Because I think everything I did when I was 15 to lead me to this point has, has, has made me who I am as a character and as a whole. But if I had to say something, I would say, yo, uh, weed isn't more important than girls. <laughs> Bro, all yeah. I did my freshman year was smoke weed. A girl could be naked in my room and she'd be like, "Do you want to?" I'd be like, "You want to? You want to smoke?" Is that what you're trying to say? Because we could look. You know, I could I could poke a hole in this water bottle. We can go to town. She's like, Trevor, I want to have sex with you though. I was like, Yeah, I want to have sex with this fucking joint though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. uh, yeah, I'd probably say that. I'd be like, Yo, dude, weed ain't weed ain't <laughs> all that great. Probably that. All right, all right. Let's do. Uh, time for a few more. Fan yeah, let's do a couple couple more fan ones and we we'll get out of here. A couple more um, FQs. Okay, so fan uh, swole underscore fella underscore. Um, how did you come up with your hand signs? Oh, this shit? Yeah, that shit. I don't even know, dude. I think I was just fucking around, just like trying to be like, I think I was just trying to be like some idiot online, just being like, ha you know, like just some fuck boy. And then I did it like repetitively just out of it yeah. and then like people send it to me every day like I'm people, a, it's, yeah. it's crazy i'm gonna be honest it looks sort of like loose rock paper scissors that's what it looks like to me rock scissors, you know what i mean like <laughs> it really does right it looks like if rock paper scissors was like an drunk. interpretive dance or some shit yeah it right. does look like a drunk rock paper scissors it's like a, it's like a yeah, I don't even know. It's but like, it, yeah, but it it is interesting that like, you would just like kind of riff that, and then people like it's just interesting what people pick up on. Oh, They're that, like, oh, that's my shit. That's what's the, I think that's what's weird about every trend. Never, you know, you oh see some shit, you're like, why is that a thing? Um, all right, we have time for one more. Um, all right, let's get a good one. Let's get a good one. Um, so what fraternity was? He, oh, this is from uh, Lamb sixteen ninety four. Um, what fraternity was he in, and the craziest fraternity story he has? Okay. Uh, yeah. I was in a fraternity called Delta Upsilon, which uh, the, their symbols are just a triangle and a Y. So, okay. you know, uh, they were cooler at, at schools in, in, in different states. They, they sucked everywhere, like in California. That's so funny. And nobody ever had him at their school. They were like a smaller fraternity, like nationally. So, like, they'd just be like, you were in what? Right. Yeah. Uh, you know. I, yeah, I've, I've never heard of it. Yeah. They, they're, they're small nationally. Uh, crazy story. Here, I'm trying to think. Uh, I got two funny stories. Give it to us. Here's a funny one. So, and this, and this, this will probably at some point come back to to 
full circle or something. I love so it. Might as well get it on the record or, now. Or full square. Uh, so there was a fraternity called SAE there. Okay. And they they were just a smaller chap. They were just a small house. Just the smallest fraternity. Just, it was just little guys, right? And one night my roommate got really drunk. Well, we were all drunk. And he goes, I'm going to take a shit on their letters. <laughs> So we go and we okay. steal their letters, right? Yeah. And my roommate just in the middle of the fraternity courtyard just shits on it. Just log right on it. And then pees on it. And then for whatever reason, he's like, I, he's like, I'll do that, but I won't take it back. I was like, okay, whatever. So me and another guy carried this giant Sigma, this huge block letters, like like five feet tall, probably big. What? They're big. What is it made out of? Which wood. Because they had these like posted up in their front yard for anybody's access. Why are you taking them? To shit on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my bad. I thought he shit on them there. No, no, no. We we, oh. we, we took them back to our fraternity. Oh. It's like a drunk night. It's like 3 a.m. We it. take them back, whatever, because their house was around the corner. And then we come back, um, and he does that. So me and another guy go to drop it off at the house. And after we drop it off, we take a different route. And right as we do that, some girls who were going to SAE, saw, they, they only saw me. They saw me leaving the house. Oh, no. So these girls go inside and they're like trevor wallace just shit on your sign but i didn't no. do it so sa comes storming up to our house the next day they're like blah, 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 and they're fucking losing their minds yeah and they're like trevor you did it and i was like i don't want to snitch on my roommate i was like nah wasn't me and they're like okay then who did it and i was like okay i did not do it but it wasn't me <laughs> More of the story, <laughs> our fraternity president was really close with sae so i had to go and apologize to their whole chapter no. Sunday night. No. But I, it was the weirdest apology ever because I was like, I'm sorry, somebody in my fraternity shit on your letters, but it was not me. But I am sorry for that person. But I had to be the face of the shit campaign. No, dude. So everybody in SAE still thinks I shit on their letters. So so you, so y'all took the letters back to the place uh -huh. and then that dude shit on the letters at your place. Yep. And then you took them back to the thing. Yep. I'm not understanding. Like, was it a was it a violent shit, or was it just like a like a little turd that like oh, sat on top of the letters? Well, so we, we when we put it back, we laid it on its back. Um, okay, gotcha. So it was it was a log. It oh, was, it was oh, it was not a peaceful thing to carry. This it was, was like after Taco Bell log. Not good. You know what's so funny about people shitting on things? They always have it ready. There was like, man, right. I'm gonna shit on this. I go, you, how do you have a shit ready like, all bro, the we time? Got toilets all over the place, but you were just ready for this moment? Just ready. And, and they, they, they play it off like they don't. They're like, uh, I don't know if I can't, you know, I could probably squeeze one out. And then it's just like, what? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I had to go to the chapter and apologize, which was hilarious because like, they're all like, yeah, okay, you didn't do it, but you for sure did. But I was like, no, I did it. Yeah, it's so funny how you had to, you've never had to apologize for someone else. It's just so, yeah. it's just yeah. that I don't want to sit on my, on my roommate. So, Shout out to me I mean, for not being a snitch, dude. Yo, snitches get stitches, dude. Dog. That's what your parents taught you. That's what I'm saying. Uh, then another another funny one is one yeah. time, uh, I have a lot of dumb drunk college stories. Of course. Got punched in the face by a bouncer at a bar. That was cool. But one of my favorite, <laughs> my personal favorites is we played BYU uh, in football one year and we all dressed up as Mormons and Shut went to a tailgate. Yeah. Oh, this is like, this is like pre-PC era. This was, this is like the... To a Mormon, this was the equivalent of going blackface. That's what I was just going to say. Like, yeah, like, yeah. like, this was like 2013 or 14. This was right. like pre, like, oh, don't do that. Yeah. So we like wore bike helmets and button up t-shirts. And like, we, there was a Yo. gang of us out there and we all got blacked out. And then we were just like taunting all the BYU people. And my roommate went to jail that night. <laughs> and it was fucking, he went to jail in a Mormon outfit. Like, that shit was, that was just a good old fashioned time. Bro, bro, that's probably the best way to go to prison though, because they don't want you to stay in prison because right. they think you're going to spread the word. Right. So they're like, uh, get them you out of here, bro. You know what butt fuck the Bible, dude? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I got, cr I got countless, uh, college stories. Damn, dude. Uh, but yeah, man, I think those are the two highlight ones, yeah. which are, are pretty funny ones. Dude, you know? that's, that's great, man. That's great. Thank you so much for coming on my dude, podcast, man. Guess. What is this podcast called again? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know, man, by Michael Blaustein. That's a good one. Yeah, sick, dude. Sick. Dude. Listen, I hope that you guys learned a lot about Trevor Wallace when we do the next one. You guys can be like, oh, you guys will be more informed on yes. why he is the way he is. Exactly. And then now when I talk about John Mayer, they'll be like, oh, his passion. His passion. Your body's one leg. You're telling me you wouldn't have John Mayer. Maybe the apartment Your above with the window open while you fucking. Leg. What? 
I'm I'm saying you wouldn't have John Mayer. Maybe the apartment above yeah. window open while you fucking. Oh, dude, that's that's amazing. Yeah. But I always just think that the girl's gonna be thinking about him as opposed yeah. to me. Who would you play then? Like Takashi or something? Someone just disgusting looking. Yeah, Takashi's not that gross. Really? Though. Yeah, he's not that gross. He's pretty. He looks. Yeah, he looks like a human now and later. I think. Yeah, he looks like a, a human porta potty. Oh Jesus Christ! Porta potty on like a gay pride parade <laughs> with all the confetti on top. All right, well that'll do it, man. Thank you guys. Episode for nineteen, of the Trevor Wallace interview, dude. Uh, thank you, Trevor Wallace, for coming on to uh, Stiff Socks. Uh, Hell yeah, dude. If you want those fajita shirts in the description. And like I said, I'll be at the Ventura Harbor Comedy Club tonight. And then next week, you can see me in Nashville and Huntsville, Alabama, the 29th and the 30th. Go to TrevorWallsComedy.com for tickets. Do you have anything you need to plug? Um, uh, Yeah. Uh, second week of June, I'm going to be in Lincoln, Nebraska at Comedy Loft. And then third week of June, I'm going to be at Lake uh, Tahoe Improv. Come out. All my tickets are on MichaelBBlaustein.com. Um mm-hmm. Love us, subscribe to us, rate us on iTunes and Spotify, and watch us on YouTube, y'all. Five stars. Peace.